Hi, this is John. I'm out in the shop, and today we're going to diagnose an engine that just doesn't want to start. So, a customer brings this to me. It happens to be an edger. Uh, that's not what's important. We're talking about a four stroke engine here. He had it for a couple of years. It ran last year. Went to use it this year, didn't want to work, has no idea. So it's a fairly new engine, and I'm hoping that whatever I find is going to be pretty obvious. On a previous video, a viewer had a comment, and he sent me this acronym to diagnose an engine called FAX. And what does that stand for? It stands for Fuel, Air, Compression, Timing, and Spark. Now this is good on any engine. However, on small engines, you really cannot affect the timing. There's one time when timing can change, and that's if you are say have a mower and it hits a rock and stops suddenly. Uh, you will damage the shear pin or the woodruff key, and then you'll have to get in there and fix that. I did make a video about that, uh, but in this case, I checked with the customer, did you hit a rock or sidewalk or something? He said no. So we're just gonna get rid of that one. So a small engine you're worried about, can air get in there? So I'm gonna take off the cover. The air filter is here and it is not clogged. I'll blow it out, but it looks really good. So I have confidence that air is getting into the engine. So I'm gonna strike off air. Next, I'm gonna go after spark. This is the spark plug boot. It goes over the spark plug. I'm just gonna pull it off. And I have a spark tester. So this goes in between the spark plug and the spark plug boot. I'm gonna, you can get these at auto parts stores, very cheap. I'm just gonna hook this into the boot. And then when I give this a pull, it should glow orange. By the way, as with most engines, uh, there is a cutoff switch uh, the dead man switch, whatever it is, but you have to hold this, otherwise the spark is grounded. So every time I'm pulling to generate the spark, I am holding this closed like I would be operating it. Uh, otherwise, you're going to pull it and you're not going to see a spark and you're going to think, oh, there's something wrong. Well, there's something wrong. You didn't hold this handle down. Okay. There. Now you can see it. See it glowing orange. What does that mean? It means that the engine is producing electricity to make the spark and that that is getting to the spark plug. It doesn't mean that the spark is actually going through the plug. It could have a bad plug, but we can test that real quick. I've removed the spark plug. I plugged it into the boot. I'm going to use a jumper wire and connect it to the side opposite the electrode, so after it jumps the gap. Okay. and then connect that to ground somewhere. So now when I pull, I should see the spark come across the spark plug gap. Yes. And indeed you can see that. So the spark plug is good. I am convinced that the engine is making spark and the spark plug is good. So I'm going to scratch that off. Now we're left with fuel and compression. I'm going to go to compression next since I already have the spark plug off. This is a compression tester, and you can get these also at your auto parts store. Uh, you can also get them off of places like eBay. I got a whole kit for under $20, very reasonable. I selected the correct fitting. I screwed it into the spark plug uh, hole, and then I just connect this. And now I'm going to pull three, four times, and I would like to see this between 90 and about 110. So 100 is what you'd like to see. Well, we may have found the problem. He has no compression. Now we're gonna focus on compression. Where am I gonna go next? I'm going to look up under here. This is the overhead valve, OHV. It's a valve cover. 
and there is a gap or a lash that has to be between the lifting rods and the valves and I'm going to see if perhaps these need to be adjusted and if so it should fix the problem. So we're going to start by taking that cover off. So after taking out the four bolts and carefully separating this from the gasket uh, this comes off there's a breather tube that pops out this pulls off be very careful with this gasket unless you have another one to replace it with because it tends to get stuck over in the corners so this is what it looks like underneath these are gonna rock to push the valves in and out this is the intake side this is the exhaust side how do i know that because here's the exhaust tube coming up to the exhaust muffler get you at an angle where you can see the piston going up and down there it goes down, and the valve moves, comes back up, and that's going in for the intake stroke, and there's top dead center on the compression. You want this to be a top dead center, these should have some gaps. You hear that knocking around this one also, and I'm just going to check it with a set of feeler gauges, and on the exhaust side, I don't have the specs exactly, but typical is eight thousandths. So I'm just gonna put this underneath on top of the valve and it slips right in, it feels good. So I think that's adjusted properly. And then on this side, six thousandths. And that also feels good. So now I'm scratching my head a little bit because this seems to be in adjustment, but I'm not getting compression. I'm going to do something that seems a little unconventional and that is I'm going to put some oil on top of the engine. This hasn't been run for a year and I'm thinking well maybe the oil is drained out, it's dry inside and it's not making good contact uh, to, to seal the rings against the cylinder. So I'm going to put a little oil there and do another compression test see what happens. I'm just going to use a straw and if you've got something more fancy that's great. Doesn't take much. The oil will actually help to seal. I'm going to tilt this up and move it about so it gets all the way around the rings and then we'll see if that improves things at all. By the way, I truly have no idea what's going on here so that's why I'm filming it. So now it's going to pull the cord again and see what happens. Ah, look at there. We got a hundred. It has good compression. So that may have been it. The rings were just extremely dry. Let's try it again. We'll push the, push this. Push the reset. Here we go. There. That ought to do it. I'm going to put the spark plug in and this ain't going to start. So but before I try and start it, I'm going to say we check the compression. That's done. We didn't talk about fuel. And so I'm going to do that right now. One of the things you should always check is, is there fuel in it? And in this case, yes, there is plenty of fuel in it all the way to the top. The other thing, because it sits in the winter and there can be condensation, so temperature goes up, it goes down, and... Uh, air moisture will make its way in go to the bottom and then it winds up coming at the bottom of the carburetor which is right here so your air filter and it, the air goes through the carburetor picks up the fuel goes into the engine so right here is a, a little bolt and it's just meant to bleed off some of the gas so if gas and water was to come into here the water would go to the bottom and I'm just going to clear that out just in case and I'll I'll be able to see if there was water in it after I drain it off because the water will go to the bottom and it'll look like little bubbles at the bottom of the gas so I have a clean container I'm going to put that up under it I'm going to take this off just get a couple of ounces off of there if there was water in it you'd see these little droplets dancing around on the bottom. And so all that looks clean. So Why don't you put some water in there and show them huh. what it would look like. Brilliant. I am brilliant. That's why you married me. 
putting in a couple of drops of water. Shake that up a little. Okay. Now, if you can see that, it's just different. You see that little oval at the bottom. And then you can tell, hey, that's that's different. That shouldn't be in there. That's water. Okay, so this the gas looks good. He says he puts Stabil in it at the end of every season. Should be good. I'm gonna go outside and give it a pull. All right, so another successful repair. The customer's gonna be happy to get this one back, and he's gonna be happy that it wasn't anything major. I guess major point out of this video, one, go by this fax, uh, fuel, air, compression, timing, spark. Doesn't matter which order you attack it in, but that's gonna be your roadmap to diagnosis. The other is, look for the obvious stuff, that meaning this was a two-year-old engine, hadn't been used very much, so there's no need for me to tear into it and inspect the piston. I'm, I'm going to look for the simple things. And once I saw there was no compression, but yet the valve lash was okay, uh, it had me scratching my head, but then I thought, well, maybe, maybe the piston's dry. Uh, add a little oil and everything was good. Go about your diagnosis methodically and you're going to find a problem. All right. Hey, thanks for watching, and we will see you soon on the homestead. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.